In this video, I'm gonna cover why I think you should be using Flex Gap for pretty much everything across your site when it comes to spacing. Now, I know I have a tendency to do things like margin top and margin left to space out things like menu links, cards, and that sort of thing in videos in the past, but nowadays what I'm going to be doing is pretty much exclusively using this Gap feature. Now, of course, if you've used Grid, you already know that Gap exists. There's a Flex Gap functionality as well that's super cool. Of course, I'm gonna show you that in just a little bit, and it's supported by all the major browsers, so it's totally safe to use. So what you're looking at here on your screen is an extremely cramped and messy layout. And what I'm going to do is just demonstrate why I think this is the best way to manage your spacing. And it's just a really neat feature to be able to take advantage of. It requires a tiny, tiny little bit of CSS, but it's so simple that I don't think it's going to be a problem. So let me demonstrate what I would typically do in a layout. So I would add probably, you know, whatever margin that I find in my Figma document from my designer to the left of something like a menu link, and that kind of spaces everything out. The downside of doing this is that typically your first and your last element won't have that spacing. So when you go to rearrange your menu, something like that, then suddenly you'll find there is margin on the left of your first one, but not your second. So then, you know, oh man, it's such a big deal. You gotta go add this spacing here. But when you do that across every site that you manage, or if you're building multiple sites in a week, working on different pages, it just becomes cumbersome and it's a time waster. So Flex Gap is extremely cool and it's just something that you should absolutely be taking advantage of. Although Oxygen doesn't support it natively, it's so simple to use that it's really not that big of a deal and I'm sure you'll see, once I show you in just a second how it works, why I think so strongly that you should be using this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the margin left off of all of these different elements to demonstrate what I have here. So of course, there's 65 pixels on all three of these. And of course, you would never want your menu to look like this because it would be extremely hard to use. So what I would do in this case is select the div that wraps all of these text elements. And what I'm going to do is go to advanced, custom CSS, and I'm simply going to type gap, colon, and then whatever value I want. So 25 pixels, not 250, 25 pixels. There we go. So now there's 25 pixels of spacing between these elements. We actually had 65, so I'll go ahead and set it to that. And what you'll notice now is that it automatically spaces out these elements and it does not apply that gap to the first element in the container. This is so neat because if you go to switch your elements around, then it also respects that automatically for you. Not only that, but if you change the flex direction of this container, it still applies. So you can see there's 65 pixels of space between these. And in the old way that I showed you, I would have had to go to my class or potentially every single element remove that margin left and instead change it to margin top. So it's a small workflow change that I think has a huge improvement overall in terms of efficiency and just general site management. Now, of course, I'll change this back to horizontal and we'll go ahead and move down to this section here. So if I expand my structure panel, what you'll see is I have this div with three containers in it. So the first one wraps my heading and my text. The second one wraps all of these cards and the third one wraps the text. So we effectively have three children of div number 17 here. Now what's going to happen is again, if I go to custom CSS gap, let's say 50 pixels, then we will get 50 pixels of gap between these element containers on the page. So of course it doesn't apply to the children of those children, it's just the direct children of the div that you applied that to. Now again, what's so cool about this is if I decide to change the organization of this container and I move this text element up there, the spacing is automatically applied. I do nothing except just make the change that I need and I'm done. I just absolutely love this functionality. So let's do it on this div here. Now, of course, you could set this div to a width of 100%. You could go space between or space around, but often that's not consistent with the layout that you actually want. So what I would do in this case is just not define a width on this div. And instead we're going to, you guessed it, go to gap, and then we'll just change this to 25 pixels. So now automatically I have that spacing applied for me. And as you've already seen, rearrange the divs and everything is still respected for us. So it's very, very cool. Now, another example that you can do is let's say in this card here, I have these two direct children. So one div wraps those three elements and then one div wraps all of this text. So I could again, just go to either the class of the element if I happen to have one and I can go custom CSS and gap, then let's just say like 15 pixels because I have a class that's going to apply to all those other cards here. And there we go, it's automatically applied. The other thing is if you have something like a bunch of text links like this or a bunch of text elements that are wrapped by a div and you want them to be spaced out, instead of having to apply those margin spacings to every single one, you guessed it, I can just go gap eight pixels or something, whatever value you want, and there you go. Everything is automatically spaced out for us.
That's just so cool. I love this. Okay, so next up we have another section down here that I will change a little bit of the setup on, but this is going to demonstrate how you can use this gap functionality for both rows and for columns. So let me change this up just a little bit. Okay, so each of these divs have a width of 30%. So what I'm going to do on the wrapper is go to advanced and then we'll go with flex wrap. I'm also going to go ahead and change this to stretch so everything is the same height to demonstrate what I'm about to show you a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is hit advanced, custom CSS, gap, and this time we can actually give it two different variables. So the first spacing number is going to be your row gap and the second one is going to be your columns. So let's go with something like 15 pixels and then we'll go with zero pixels. So if I collapse this editor window, then you can see that the 15 pixels is applying to our rows and the zero pixels is applying to our columns. So to demonstrate that a little bit further, you can kind of see how that takes effect. So this is super handy if you need specific controls for rows and columns. And of course, this also accepts pretty much any spacing variable you want from percentages to you know rim units to whatever you want, it all works in here. So I think that's really, really neat. Again, this will also apply if we change it back to a vertical layout as opposed to horizontal like this. And then one more little demonstration is I have a sequence of images here. Right now this div is set to a vertical layout. So what I can do, custom CSS, gap, 25 pixels. And now everything is spaced out properly for us. I could change this to horizontal. Again, we could go layout, flex wrap. And then you might consider in this case, maybe something like 25 and 75 pixels or you know whatever you want, whatever is gonna make sense in your case. I think this is such a cool feature of Flexbox in particular. And of course, Oxygen supports it. This is already becoming a new crucial part of my workflow and I certainly hope it is for you. If you're a user of utility class frameworks for Oxygen, specifically automatic, gap classes are built right in, so this is not a surprise for you, but it's something worth taking advantage of whether or not you use these utility class frameworks and it's something I'm going to definitely be using from now on in the future. This video is definitely shorter than some of mine in the past, but I hope it is helpful for you. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.